Hello, my name's Robin Skipsey, and today I'm presenting lessons from a large-scale train-the-trainer program. In today's presentation, we'll look at the large-scale train-the-trainer program in Japan, look at some challenges with train-the-trainer programmers generally, how to respond to the challenges, and some lessons learned. So now I'll introduce you to the large-scale train-the-trainer program in Japan. The British Council ran a large-scale train-the-trainer program on behalf of the Japanese Ministry of Education from 2014 to 2019. And you can see from this diagram how it worked. There were three layers. There were British Council trainers around four or five individuals at any one time. And they trained English leaders. The English leaders were practicing teachers who were rec recruited from pre prefectures across Japan. After receiving training from the British Council trainers, these English leaders then cascaded the training to school teachers across Japan. This project was known as the Leaders of English Education Project. It was aimed at all school levels in basic education, elementary, junior high and senior high. And each level received its own specialised training uh, based on the national curriculum. 48 hours of continuous professional development were provided for the English leaders and 2,500 English leaders were trained in total over the five years of the project. In turn, the leaders delivered 14 hours of continuous professional development to teachers across Japan and over 80,000 teachers received this training. The aims of the project were to support the new national curriculum, specifically to ensure a better balance of skills in classroom teaching, uh, balancing speaking, reading, listening and writing. Traditionally in Japanese English classrooms, uh, lessons often took place mainly in the students and teachers first language of Japanese and typical classroom activities might include word for word memorization of texts, translation activities, um, and detailed explanations of grammatical forms. Before looking further at the detail of the programme, I'd like to look at some of the challenges with Train the Trainer programmes. First a note about terminology. Train the Trainer programmes are often referred to as cascade training schemes uh, in research papers. Uh, the idea is that uh, information and skills cascades from the top level down to uh, teachers' practice in schools, and this illustration aims to show uh, that uh, idea. A variety of studies have been carried out on the effectiveness of cascade training schemes. In their paper, Does the Cascade Model Work for Teacher Training? Analysis of Teachers' Experiences, De Chaba, Matsaliso and Mokele say, in agreement with our findings, many researchers state that the cascading of information results in the dilution and misinterpretation of crucial information. Indeed, less and less is understood as one goes down the cascade. Similarly, in his paper Cascade Training, and teachers professional development. David Hayes writes, in their concern with improved curricula and more effective teaching learning methods, education ministries often use the cascade model to attempt to affect large scale change at the classroom level. Experience of cascades in in-service development has tended to show, however, that the cascade is more often reduced to a trickle by the time it reaches the classroom teacher on whom the success of curricular change depends. In these two papers we see a common concern that as the training is cascaded from one level to the next, the content is diluted, the ideas uh, become less and less clear and that as a result uh, it is ineffective in bringing about changes at classroom level levels. Given these issues you might wonder why any government would wish to employ a cascade training program. However, cascade training is of course a very economical way of reaching a large number of teachers 
uh, with a small training team. And given the right steps, it's possible to counteract the issues identified uh, in this section. And we're going to look at how we responded to the challenges of cascade training uh, in this project. This infographic shows the organisation of the Leaders of English Education project. Training was divided into four steps, which took place over the course of one academic year. This was important because trainers need the time to integrate new teaching activities and ideas into their classroom practice before they are able to cascade and demonstrate these techniques to their peers and colleagues in their local areas. Let's look at step one. The recruited leaders of English education attended central residential training for five days, during which time they gained practical teaching skills. The central residential training mostly took place in the National Teacher Development Centre based in Scuba Prefecture. Professional development can fail to be effective if it's too abstract or if the ideas and techniques being introduced are not realistic for teachers' own classroom environments. We aimed to help pract uh, teachers practice teaching skills that were realistic even in class sizes of 30 to 40 students, which is still relatively common in the Japanese education system. We focused on changing classroom behaviours encouraging uh, teachers to introduce techniques for teaching the productive skills such as speaking and writing and giving them practice of uh, delivering these teaching techniques through micro teaching which is teaching in in small groups with some teachers acting as teachers and others as students and allowing them to receive feedback both from their peers and from the trainers in this picture you can see a group of elementary school teachers practicing useful teaching techniques for using picture books in class. In step two of the programme, after the residential training, the teacher leaders returned to their classrooms uh, to try out lesson, uh, teaching techniques in their classrooms. While they were doing this, they were supported by British Council trainers and their peers through an online, a dedicated online community. In step three, teachers return to central residential training with videos of their classroom practice, which they shared with the British Council trainers and with their peers. Teachers made groups uh, and they shared with each other the lessons they'd learnt from applying different techniques in their own classrooms. Then teachers moved on to simulate the training that they deliver in the Cascade programme. Doing this with the actual training materials that they would be cascading was an extremely valuable experience. It allowed teachers to practice facilitating discussions, responding to questions, modelling activities and other useful training tips. During the process they received peer feedback and feedback from the British Council trainers and maintained reflection diaries on their progress. The final step was then for teacher leaders to deliver their cascade training and this was monitored by local boards of education and reported to the Ministry of Education. We'll now look at the main lessons learned as a result of delivering this project. Three key lessons emerged from delivering this project. First was how to ensure fidelity. Second, the importance of monitoring and quality assurance. And finally, the importance of bilingual approaches. We learned several lessons about how to ensure fidelity. First, it's important to keep the cascade shallow. In this project, we only had three layers. We had the British Council trainers, the teacher leaders and classroom teachers. And we didn't expect a cascade to cascade beyond the third level. This ensures that the effect of dilution is, is kept relatively uh, low. Secondly, it's really important to actively seek feedback from trainers and trainees and to use this feedback to modify the training contents. We uh, looked at reflection diaries. Uh, we looked at feedback uh, from questionnaires at each stage of the training and these were uh, and this feedback was used in consultation with the teacher leaders to modify training contents to make them more practical easier to deliver uh, and more effective and the third point was to include scripts for training session delivery this actually was something that uh, 
but came about in our project as a result of very strong pressure from the teacher leaders. And we initially were quite resistant to the idea of including scripts in our uh, cascade training. However, uh, what we discovered over the course of the project was that the scripts did not restrict autonomy. Uh, they simply gave a baseline which allowed all uh, teacher leaders to deliver training to an acceptable standard. The importance of monitoring and quality assurance is, of course, fairly obvious. It provides evidence of reach and impact. Through data collected on the project, we were able to demonstrate that not only were we reaching the targeted numbers, but that they were satisfied uh, with the usefulness of the training. And this data was very important in ensuring continued funding for the project over the five years that it took place. However, as, as well as sharing successes, uh, collecting data also allows you to inv investigate and fix problems that are occurring through the project. The kind of data that we collected on this project looked at uh, changes in classroom behaviour by teachers, reported both by teachers themselves and by their students. And this gave us a lot of useful insights which allowed us to progressively change and improve the quality of the training delivery. One of the biggest changes that occurred over the course of the project was the attitude towards bilingual approaches. When the project started, the Ministry of Education was very keen to transform teaching in Japan from what had been a fairly monolingual approach with many lessons conducted entirely in Japanese to an approach that contained more of an English immersion approach. As a result, demonstration lessons on the training program involved a lot of English immersion style lessons. And many teachers responded extremely positively to this and were very enthusiastic about exposing their students to more English use and to encouraging the use of productive skills in their classes. However, as a result of looking at student feedback, observing cascade training sessions, and looking at reflection diaries and other court sources of data, we quickly became aware that there were also benefits to more bilingual approaches, both to teacher training and to teaching in the classroom. First of all, the benefits of L1 discussions for teachers were particularly clear at um, primary school and lower secondary school level. Although teachers were very keen to take part in English teaching um, demonstrations which were in English, in order to understand, fully understand these, these teaching ideas and teaching techniques, it was very beneficial for them to, ha to have explanations which were in their first language and to discuss, have discussions with their peers which were also in their first language. Similarly, student feedback and observation of teacher videos showed that the most effective lessons were those which allowed some space for the use of students' first language. For example, setting lesson objectives in the first language ensured that all students were aware of the purpose of the lessons they were taking part in. Discussions of about language, such as grammar or pronunciation or spelling, were generally felt to be clearer and more effective when these were conducted in the student's first language. As a result, over the course of the project, it became clearer and clearer that a, a bilingual approach was more effective uh, for teachers and students, particularly at lower levels of proficiency than a purely monolingual all English approach. And more and more research is emerging which underlines um, this finding. Finally, I'd like to look at the legacy and challenges of running a project such as this. Running a trainer trainer program allows you, to, allows you to create a cadre of experienced and effective teacher trainers who are dispersed geographically across the country and working at different levels of edu English education. Some of the English leaders continue to work in the classroom. Others have moved into Board of Education roles or work with the National Ministry of Education. They provide uh, a great resource for English education in Japan over the coming years. However, this also brings with it challenges in how do you make best use of a cadre of trainers such as this um, and how, do they, how are they involved in any future professional development that's offered 
uh, in the years to come. I'd like to thank you uh, for um, watching this presentation and I hope you have found it useful and interesting.